a quick and dirty video on how to fix up your golf course. Um, you know, if you're a beginner designer or you're pulling in stuff from LIDAR and it's not a fantasy course and the LIDAR data just, you know, doesn't cooperate. Um, yesterday we had Dave Driscoll and he had Ashburn Golf Club Beta that we put on the show. And I actually had him send me his course file. Now, and that's what I suggest to anybody that designs on a PC. All right. If you design on a PC, you're going to have the dot course file on your C drive or wherever. All right. And if you have any issues, let me put this in here. Send the course file to that email address. They're tiny. All right. They're, you know, less than like 10 meg. All right. So what happened was if you send me the course file, I can actually import the course and physically show you regarding your course and how to fix it. Right. Dave did that. So he sent me his course file and I did some stuff on the show last night and I, and I broke that off. Uh, the stream, and I'm going to combine it with this. All right. So in any event, he sent me the uh, his course, Ashburn Golf Club Beta, and we went through. So as Greg and I played it, you know, we're like, oh, man, the cart paths need help. Uh, the transitions between the cart path and the bridges needed help. He said he had problems with some of the water. Um, there's, you know, we also pointed out that there were a couple other issues like, uh, tea boxes, right? So here's his course, which was excellent. And like I stress, if you, you know, if you have issues, you design and you design on the PC, please email me your course file. All right. Then like Dave's, I can bring it up live and actually show you guys how to fix the stuff. All right. So it'll be advantageous to you and myself in that I can actually show you, you know, instead of saying, well, you need to fuzzy brush this. Now I can show you what I mean by fuzzy brush and how to do it. Right. So in any event, um, there were a couple issues that I didn't go over last night and that one of the big ones was the water. All right. And if I can find the pond that he was working on, let's see, I think it was on 15. So where's that right here. Okay. So he has this big ass. Um, and again, this is a LIDAR course. All right. So, that's why it looks like it does there. All right. So he was having issues with the water and it's actually pretty simple. Um, what you have to do is when you create the water, you know, let's bring it up to a level that we could see it and you could see where it's going to be, right? And you can also see that it's going to protrude out over on the side here. All right. So what I normally do is I'll do a cue for advanced edit. And well, let me spin it first. So I get it lined up as, as good as I can this way. Right. Now I hit Q. And I extend this thing out and do an advanced edit. So I want, I want it to be one pane of glass. I always call it glass. All right. So right now I could see that I have it long enough that it's extending out to where it needs to go. All right. And it looks like, you know, we don't want to be too high because it looks like it's much uh, lower on this side of the lake. 
So we got to find a happy medium. We don't want it too too low on that side, but we don't want it really extending out over on the other side. Okay. So with that in mind, let's uh, try to find a happy medium here. So let's extend it out, and you could see that it's going to be one perfect. of glass there for the water. Now you'll also notice that it's extending out over onto the over in the top left there. It's extending out and that's fine. So let's just hit this thing. All right. Now we have a perfect pond. Okay. And it looks pretty realistic. And it's one pane of glass here. So it looks good. There's no transitions. You don't have to worry about trying to level up the other pieces. All right. But what we do need to do is we need to go over here now. Because you can see we've got this junk, right? So the water is extending out past the water area. So we just need to sculpt this land. All right. Now I try to keep the the terrain the same so when you do that you want to sculpt it and raise it all right because then it keeps all the angles of the ground the same all right so i'll use my extension here and let's start raising this up all right so like four feet. At a time. And already you can start to see that it's filling it in. All right. So we just need to get rid of these areas. You know, we can just put it up maybe, I don't know, a foot. Now you can see this is still not done, right? See those jagged edges right there? All right. That's a no-no when you're doing water. So you need to raise that up just enough to hide that. So I'm going to raise it up another foot and they're gone. No, they're not. See, it's still here. So I got to raise it up another foot and make sure you get rid of those triangles because it looks like hell. Um, and again, we have another area there with water there. So we just need to raise this up another foot. Let's see if that gets rid of it. Yep. So when you use the raised brush, it keeps the contour of the land the same. So it doesn't flatten it because we don't want to flatten this. Um, you can see here, you can still see the water there with the blue. So we need to raise this up a little. All right. So now we've gotten rid of the water that we don't want. And we've got a perfect pond. Okay. And that's the important thing is that you need to make sure it extends all the way around and you don't leave a small area, you know, that you can see the water. All right. So this looks good. Um, and if this is what it looks like, you know, so be it. Um, you could smooth this out a little bit. But, you know, if it's if that's the way it's it's supposed to look great so that's water all right and i know he was having problems with the paint sticking out over the side of the water area so that's how you fix that okay um one of the other things we brought to his attention was his tea boxes okay so if you're this is a lidar course so if you do lidar a lot of times the lidar just doesn't line up perfectly so you end up with 
um, stuff that's off a little bit, all right? And perfect example is greens and tee boxes. So when we started playing yesterday, Greg and I, let's just take a look at his hole number one. Okay. Now, Greg's a stickler, and so am I. Um, not a, I'm not as bad as him, but as far as the the T boxes, see how it just it chamfers down, right? In the front, in the back, on the sides, you know they're not they're not square. Okay, so what I suggest doing, and you have to be careful with this stuff. Because if you, I mean, I try to use, for this type of thing, this one. And we just have to be careful that we don't make it look uh, real, you know. So it doesn't look artificially raised. And the only way we're going to find out is if we, and I have that, that macro. You can hear my uh, mouse clicking, and I'm not clicking it. Okay. So now that T box is flattened. So you don't need to raise it, you don't need to lower it. Um, you know, and we're just going to go around the edge here. until that's flat, all right? So now that looks much better, okay? Little things like that, all right? To get this stuff really look, you know, really looking good. So just run that around, all right? It takes what, 20 seconds? And it makes all the difference in the world, you know, hitting these tee boxes. So no matter which ones you're playing on, it's nice and flat, right? So <clears throat> that's what he needs to do for the tee boxes, all right? The bunkers really look good. Like this one was pretty much flattened, all right? So he's just gonna have to go around, and make sure it's flat. I did the cart path last night. That's part of the video. I'm not gonna do it again. Um, <clears throat> now another thing I want to show him is transitions. So you can see when you do lidar data, um, you get some funky splines in here. Okay, so what I normally do is delete the one that's at the very top here. And start cleaning this up. Because a lot of times you're going to have to, to get it look looking decent. Uh, You know, you have to edit this stuff because most golf courses, they don't loop, you know, in. All right. And you're going to have to play with this stuff here. All right. There's so many splines that are so close to each other. You know, and if you take the wrong one out, big deal, put it back in. All right. Let's get rid of that one. And then once you get it somewhat normal, then start playing around with these.
So we can just hit this, seven, edit. And whoops, am I on the spline? Move. So you can experiment moving these splines around and see what the what it does to this transition. Okay, so we can just like try to move this. All right, and it already looks better. Okay, see how it doesn't have the little loop to loop curve? You know, it's lined up now the way it should be. This one's fine. All right, so, but a lot of times when you do LIDAR, it does this crap right here, and it looks like hell. All right, so again, just take that. Spline, delete, waypoint. All right. Let's get rid of that one. And that already looks better. Okay. Same with this one. Loop the loop here to get rid of this curve here. So, you know, it is what it is. So we've just got to... Get rid of that stuff. All right. So what else has he got here? Uh, so we did the water. We did. Now, as far as work on the greens. What I tell everybody is when you design a course, and I'm going to save this. I'm gonna, well, let's just save So when we were, Greg and I were playing this course yesterday, um, <clears throat> we noticed there were some illegal pins. He had pins right on yellow. And he's like, oh, really? I don't understand it because I didn't see it. Well, that's because he didn't have the greens when he designed the course um, set for very fast. So anytime I do any design, I always start with very firm and very fast, okay? So now I will be able to better gauge where the illegal pins are. So like this one is real close to being illegal with nine squares. So what I would do is just move this one over to an area. And again, you can see the yellow. All right. So if you want to keep the true contour of the green when you do a LIDAR, it's tough. All right. Because a lot of times when you have it on fast, it's going to pick up all the yellow. And you can see right here, there, it, there's pretty much yellow everywhere. All right. So here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to sculpt it. All right. So flatten. And I really make it large. And understand that when you flatten it, it just pushes the yellow lines down further so it's almost like you know clearing off a table all right so you can see the yellow went away there now we got to push it down a little further so we're going to just hit that all right so still very steep but see how the yellow is going away And this is what you need to do to edit LIDAR data. So you can see the yellow just keeps moving further and further down the line here. But it's still quick. All right. And just keep pushing it off, just like cleaning off a kitchen table with a sponge or something. 
Just keep pushing it down towards the edge, little by little, all right? And that's it. So, you know, that's a huge hill there. And again, we can push this down. You know, it's getting a little more tame. I mean, this could be a really steep hill, but we don't need very quick red lines. All right. So you just have to mess with it. All right. And then when you get it somewhat calm, and again, you can see here that this isn't now, you've got some yellow here. Now we've got to push it down, you know, to the front again. So this is how you edit a green to the point where, you know, you can get it playable with hard and fast greens. All right. So this is fine. If you want to have this red here, just don't put a pin near it. Okay. So this one's now legal. That's good. This one, we could move. And we could stick it right up in this corner now that we've tamed the green. Um, or was there one there already? I guess so. All right, so let's try another spot here. And again, you can see the yellow on there as you're placing it. And this one looks, it's teetering on illegal, you know, because we've got that yellow there, but it's not near the pin. I mean, I would take that and flatten that a little bit. That's better. All right, so you still got that big area here, and your pins are legal with a fast green. So now you could go back once you do all the uh, do all the greens and get them legal for hard and very hard, very fast. Now you know you're good. So now you can go and save it. And if you want to, when you publish it, if you want to go back in and make the the course 150s, you know, 140s, 160s, whatever, you can now, you now know that when you go in there and you say, yeah, these are too fast for me. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make my change. And I'm not going to make this really firm. I'm going to put it there and maybe 6.56, 6, whatever. Okay, done. Now, you know, the lines are all going to be legal because hard and fast, it was legal. All right. And they're the most extreme. So that's how you do the greens. Um, I already did multi planning. Uh, deleting trees, I did that. Let's see, flatten the tea boxes, do the water, and I think that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, combine this video with yesterday's video and post it. All right, so that's it. It's a quick and dirty um, video, but I wanted to complete what he wanted me to show him. Okay. So everybody have a great
afternoon, and Greg and I will be on later. See ya. If maybe do it a little earlier so the UK or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, on a Sunday, definitely. Yeah, like 2, 3, something like that. Sure. Part time. I, I'd I mean, be totally if, up for that. Is that cool? Oh, yeah. All Sounds right, man. fun. Sounds like a winner. So, okay. Yeah, go enjoy your uh, dinner, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow, and hopefully these guys will talk to both of us tomorrow. Sounds good. All right, man. Enjoy the fajitas. All right. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks. Bye. See ya. All right. Let's see if we can find this. Uh... Yeah, Dave, I got it. Ashburn Beta right here. All right. So first thing I want to show you is the cart path. So what we can do. Start on hole one. So, what I normally do, and you can take any of these brushes, but I normally take that one, get it down small, and if you can hear clicking, That's because I have a macro. So let me share my screen here. I've got a program right here. Synapse. Okay. So if you get yourself a good mouse like this one, it's a uh, it's a razor, R A Z E R Death Hatter Elite. Okay, I created a macro, and all it is is a bunch of left clicks that are spaced out about a second a piece. Okay, and I have it assigned to a button on the left side of my mouse to run the macro and shut it off or start it. All right, and it's beautiful because then I can just go and you know start it. And just move it. And it'll flatten these cart paths. So like this one, you can see how how it is there. See how I'll flatten it out? So all I'm doing is just clicking one time and, you know, I'm able to just follow it all the way down and it keeps it natural looking. Where we can even go as far as this brush. All right, so now if there's severe slopage on the on the cart path, you know, like here you have it up on the hill there. See how it flattened it out away from that bump there? Okay, so, yeah, and I mean, that's the thing with the LiDAR. If the splines are wrong, like you can see this cart path here is a mess, right? So, we'll just start working on it. See that? It already flattened it out, all right? Because the cart path is so important. Like, if it's going to be there, I know Greg, you know, really stresses that. Now, this stuff's a pain in the ass here, right there, because it's going down, really far down, and then back up again. 
So that one is a little tricky. So I try to use the other brush here so it's not as blatant. So try to slope this down a little bit. And you can only go a little bit at a time with this type of, of hill, but it's getting there, it's better. But this kind of slope, you've got to take it, even with the macro, I've got to take it pretty damn slow. But you can see already that it's starting to flatten it out a little bit. So it's more realistic. Because if you had a cart on that cart path, you'd be flipping over. Right? So that looks more natural coming down here. All right. So. That's it in a nutshell. It's going to take a while, you know, to do that. Um, now, like your, where did we see that one bridge? Where do you have bridges? Obviously where there's water. All right, number nine. This one looks actually pretty good. That one looks good. This one's a little rough, but that's an easy fix. Yeah, just raise this up a little bit. And the beauty of this, you can see it as you raise it up if it's going to be flush, where it's going to be flush. So one click there. And then just make this really small and clean up that one little spot. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, so there you go. So now that it looks good, it's flush to the edge of the bridge. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's just little stuff. Um, but there was another bridge. You had another one. The other one was worse. Um, you know where that was? Which hole? Here it is. Is this it? Yeah, see this one? See the gap right there where the bridge is? You know, we can fix that by extending that out a little bit. And you can see how big that brush is. That's to make it somewhat natural. So it's, you know, you're not bunching it up right at the bridge. But when you're touching up the smaller areas, you're going to want to use a smaller brush. Like already it looks better. Now well, if I could get over there. So even it out. And then we got to raise it up. If you can, you try to get it as even as possible. 
And if these splines, you know, like right now, this bridge isn't lined up with the path, which you can do. See, I see you got the splines in the water still, which you can delete these. So get rid of these splines, whoops, that are in the water. And then what you can do is actually get rid of these splines here. See, it looks better already. So it lined it up a little better. A little better there too. So, you know, little things like that. And again, you can see here, you're way off here with the bridge, which again is just a simple, you know, raise this side of the, the ground up here. Yeah, so you just, you know, if your splines are off, I mean, I'm just looking here. This needs to come up a bit over here. And if you deal with a large area, it's it looks more natural, right? That's why I have the blue so much bigger. Instead of just making it a real tiny area. Now to tweak it, you can go in here. And clean it up a little bit. And again, with the cart path, you know, you have grass here in, you know, in in the bridge here. See, and I'm being picky. You know, I'm just telling you that the stuff that, you know, like if I were a judge and you put this in a contest, these are things that I would have to pick apart, right? So simple things like putting that grass into the bridge there is a fail which is no big deal. You just need to get rid of that autogen uh, stuff. And voila, all right, it's gone. And you can put another new one in there, okay? Over here, just make sure it's far enough to the left that it doesn't, it doesn't hit the bridge. So let's finish this bridge here, get that even. Little things like that that just bug me. All right, so. It's actually sticking up a little too much over here. So we'll shrink that down a little bit right there. Get it off the wood. That's pretty good. You know, and if you want to line this stuff back up, Again, get rid of these splines. See this wild spline that's pointing down into the water? Just get rid of this thing. So six, delete. 
and delete the waypoint. And look what it did to the path. See how it lined it up? So it's little simple things like that. All right. What else was there? What did you say about your water that you screwed up? What's an easy way to clear trees? Well, it depends what it is. So I could see you manually installed these trees. These are, that's, that's an auto gen. These are all placed in here one at a time, right? Now, whether you did it or Chad's tool is a different story, all right? These are probably generated by Chad's tool. And then you stuck in these, right? So this is easy, all right? To delete an area cluster, you just hit six. That's what I use. I use a keyboard when I design. I don't use a controller, I can't do it. So you just highlight that cluster, that auto gen cluster and delete it. Now, if you want to delete a ton of trees, you just highlight one, and then you have multi-select number two, and then an area select. Now, I need a bigger circle than that. Um, why can't I make that larger? There we go. So by hitting my Alt key, I can hit this and hit anything in that circle. I can go in here and just highlight all these suckers. You want to be careful, though, that you don't highlight something you d that was splined and it's in there and you select it. It'll delete it. Okay. But say you wanted to delete all those trees. You just use that brush, highlight them all so they're green, and then delete them. Six. Those trees will be gone. Boom. Okay. So, depending on how big your circle is, all right, I'll put the trees back. All right, but yeah, if they're individually laid out, you just highlight one tree, multi select, area select, get that circle. And depending on how big it is, dictates, you know, how much it's going to flag at any particular point. All right. And that's it. So you just highlight them, get them green, and then delete them. Okay. Let's see. And you said about your water, which water was the problem? Anything in particular? And again, the cart path. And, uh, you know, this lined up here, but, you know, we can fix that very easily. I just raise this area up around the bridge here and then raise it up so it levels up. And that's a little too much, so we're going to get it evened out and raise it up.
That looks better already. All right, so what were you saying here? <clears throat> 15 water. Uh, let's see, 15. All right. So what seems to be the problem? You see a pond there and a pond here. And then I see this line here. And that's the thing. The beauty of ponds is you can just, now I see here. See, the beauty of ponds is you don't really have to worry about anything. Like we could delete this, six, delete. All right, it looks like you made a big one there. So let's delete that. Okay, so now we just have our empty hole. And you can see that brown area went away over here, right? Okay, so, all right, let's, let's put the water in. Yeah, so you can do one of two things with this water. Now, does that come into play? The answer is no. All right, so we can either, I like to keep one area of a pane of glass, as I call it, all right, for the entire water area. So what's going to end up happening, obviously, is there's going to be water over on the other side here that we don't want. In which case, what I'll do is normally, since this is not in a play of, you know, it's not a part of the golf course that you're not, we're not going to be playing from there, right? So what I do is, Get the water to look good that you're going to see, all right, in one big pane, and then go back in here. And don't go there. Sculpt land. Flatten. And raise this up. Whatever amount. Let's see. All right, let's leave that alone for now. As far as the planning, Dave, here's what I do. So if, if it's an area that already has trees, all right, but you want to make it thicker, instead of multi-planning like these, all right, you can take and again, this is this is if you have this macro thing, all right? But what I do is I will create an object, trees, whatever, ponderosa, all right? And I'll make sure that it's the proper height that I want, all right? the hell is this thing doing so once i once i know the proper height 
than what I can do. Now, that's the thing. You don't want to do this in an area where people are going to be staring at it because we're not spinning these trees. All right, so these this is a good method to put trees in the center of an area, all right? But because this is, these are separate trees, it uses less, much less. Um, resource meter than if you do it multi planning. So then you could just switch trees. I don't know why it's not. So you could get rid of all this multi planning. Yeah, because your meter is pretty far up. But it looks like you did a good job. You already you already surrounded the entire course, which is what you need to do to hide all the stuff, you know, but like this corner, you know, people might see this. So what you could do is just throw some trees in there, big bulky trees like, I don't know, maple. You can make these big. Now you can spin them, you know, you can go stop it, enlarge it, spin it. You know, that way it just it just covers that corner. So when somebody's looking, you know, they don't see that that area of the course that they shouldn't see like this water back here. Okay? It's just a good, and you know, you get down here at this level and you say, you know, where do I need trees? Well, I want to put some back here too. All right. Just to hide stuff. So that's what this macro thing is great for. It hides areas. That you're really not looking or paying attention to the trees. Okay. So if you can get yourself a decent mouse that has macro capabilities up with it, you know, it's awesome. I mean, this tree is way too big, but, you know, the macro thing is great for in here. So you can, and you can see the meters not going up that quickly. And it's the same with um, any of the planning or rocks. You know, if you wanted to create objects, nature, rocks. You know, again, in areas that really nobody's going to look at. You know, you can just put the rocks there. And, yeah, you're going to have to create new ones and make them spin them, make them bigger. You know, and just randomly go around and that type of thing. Okay? I mean, I'm just doing it for the sake of doing it. But that's it. So the bridges... We know how to clean that up now, right? Like there's there's grass sitting in there right here. So you would have to get rid of this. Get rid of that multi cluster. So six, delete, and that grass should go away. And it did. Okay. Just clean just stuff to clean it up. Okay. Anything else you want to know? Parking lot looks good. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you. 
this is a this is a problem, right? See how sloped this is? You know, imagine a golf cart on there, it's gonna fall off, right? Tip over. <clears throat> now, sometimes when you do a clubhouse, you can't flatten this. And let's see if I'm let's see. All right, that worked. So you see what I mean? See how we took it from a cart path that was ready to flip over to here. Now we've got a good looking cart path. All right. This hill right here has to be worked on a little bit at a time. And just, you know, this almost requires single clicking to clean it up a little bit so it's not like a roller coaster. See how I just made it gradual going downhill a little bit? But there are going to be spots that are close to the clubhouse that won't be able to be flattened. Okay. In which case, you're almost going to have to move the splines. Um, no, each change is going to cost you $5. And we're up to like 50 already, dude. So, sorry. Uh, I do take credit cards. Um, no, I'll send it over. All right. So, yeah. So, go get yourself a decent mouse and uh, with macros, and you'll be able to blow through this, these card paths. See how nice and smooth they are just by going over it once. So, all right. So, I'll save this. And that's it. Okay. All right, gentlemen. That's it for tonight. So Greg and I will probably be on tomorrow afternoon around 2-ish, 2 or 3 Eastern time. Until then, I'll send you this email uh, tonight, Dave, all right? But overall, really enjoyed the course. It was a gorgeous uh, course, all right? Just some cleanup to do, that's all. All right, so I will uh, see you tomorrow, hopefully, uh, around, I don't know, 2 or 3 Eastern time. And we'll take it. All right. See you, Bill. Have a good night, guys.